We're living now in the era of early climate change impacts. You know, until a decade or so ago, there was a sense that climate change was mostly theoretical. People were seeing some very early impacts, but they were, you know, they were barely outside the range of historical variation, many of them. But what we've seen over the last decade is that impacts are now really amplifying so that we're seeing events that are well outside any historic phenomena. Okay, so on that, when we look to say 2030, what might Australia look like? We're going to see more and more of these, what are we consider today extreme weather events. I guess in future, they may look not so extreme. One point I'd like to make though, is that you know the trajectory is pretty baked in for the next decade or two, because CO2 takes a long time to reach its full warming potential. So to capture all the heat it's going to capture. Australia is already Average temperatures over the continent are at one and a half degrees above the, the pre-industrial average. Um, you know, the rest of the world's at 1.1. In a decade from now, the rest of the world will be at 1.5 degrees and Australia will be probably around two, maybe a bit more. So by then we'll start to see the really serious impacts that scientists have been talking about will occur at two degrees. There are a few things which are pretty unequivocal. You know, one of them is that sea levels are going to continue to rise uh, they're going to accelerate. So we'll see much more coastal erosion than we see today. We're going to see a lot more weather intensity because a warmer atmosphere is a more energetic atmosphere. So I've already seen, you know, category six cyclones around the world and so forth. That sort of, th sort of thing is going to increase. You know, if the last decade is any um, uh, anything to go by, we're going to see a, an intensification of fire weather as well. We're going to see that those extreme conditions, those heat waves that lead to really severe fires are becoming more frequent and more extreme. And if we extend that out another 20 years to, to 2050, uh, if we don't take meaningful action on climate change now, what could the world look like? Well, look, if we don't take action, if we continue to emit at current levels, by 2050, we are going to be, you know, probably close to about three degrees of, of warming, between two and three degrees of warming. At that stage, we will have triggered some of the positive feedback loops that drives warming ever faster. No matter what we do at that point, there's very little impact that we'll have, particularly in terms of shifting to clean energy and, and closing off a polluting plant because the damage will already have been done. Boy, you know, we're looking at such a different world, it's very hard to be able to know uh, exactly what the impacts will be. That's why people talk about this next decade as the critical one to, to reduce emissions very, very steeply. I remain confident we will avoid the worst of this, that, you know, I've, I've been to COP26 to Glasgow, I've seen the intents of governments around the world and industries and the investment sector uh, very intensely pursuing uh, a series of initiatives that will get us below two degrees anyway, and hopefully we'll, we'll do better than that. So I, um, I, I, I guess to personal preference, I prefer not to look at that grimmer possible future. Uh, it feels to me sort of disempowering. I, I've put all of my energy into actually avoiding that, you know, into avoiding that worst future. So if we do avoid that worst future by 2050, what could things look like then? If we manage to get cut our emissions very steeply this decade, we will be uh, slowing that warming trend down. So we'll still be having some impacts. We'll be hovering around one and a half degrees, maybe a little bit more. And I think at that point, the world will be very, very tightly focused on getting carbon out of the atmosphere and restoring biodiversity. So restoring forests, restoring ocean health. If we look towards the end of the century and we do nothing, what's the world going to look like then? It's pretty grim, pretty grim situation. I mean, we're only dealing with probabilities here, but you know, we're looking at perhaps four degrees of warming uh, and that makes large parts of Australia and other continents uninhabitable. It involves very severe disruption to our food production, um, to the habitability of our cities, to almost everything, to transport infrastructure, everything starts changing at that four degrees of warming. And that's why uh, researchers talk about, you know, that sort of degree of warming 
triggering a catastrophic collapse of our civilizations. And uh, I think that's a, that sadly is a very real possibility. If we do take action now, what could 2100 look like? Could it be better than 2050? Well, you know, the further you go out, the more time you allow for humans to repair the damage they've done. So, you know, by 2050, regardless of what we do, we're still going to be in a titanic struggle against the changes that we've already set in place. By 2100, with, with really, uh, you know, emphatic action to deal with these problems, I think we could be living in a healing world, a world that's much better than the world we live in today, with restored forests and biodiversity and ocean health and, and more stability uh, in many, many ways. So, you know, that, that possibility is out there. Um, but it will take a lot of work for us to get to that point.